Hello everyone, the data is in and the books are ranked. Last month I asked you all to rate your favorite and least favorite Wings of Fire books and over 1800 people responded, so we ran the analyses and made this tier list based on the average of everyone's ratings. Also voting for the next tier list, the best dragon tribes, will be open for the next month, so if you want your vote counted in that one, go on down to the link in the description and send in your vote. Finally, road to 10,000, we're so close! Subscribe if you want to get in before that benchmark because once we're past it, there is no going back. All right, now let's get into the books. Starting with book one, The Dragonette Prophecy. It gets our lowest tier here. <laughs> so like, not bad, but not great. It was the introduction to the series, so it had to spend some extra time establishing the characters and the world, which slowed it down in some cases. I think it had some really good scenes though, especially the arena rendition of The Dragonettes Are Coming. <laughs> Goosebumps. Moving on, we have book two, The Lost Air with Tsunami. Book two also takes a spot in B tier, which I'll be honest, kind of surprised me. It has some great character moments, especially with Starflight at the end and Tsunami's character development over the course of the book. I I thought was really well done. Then there's book three, The Hidden Kingdom, which is one of my favorite books in the series. Glory's character arc fits the plot perfectly. There's suspense, there's action, there's excitement. There's one of the cutest romances in the series. What's not to love about it? And I think you guys agreed because it ranked in at almost the very top of A tier. Great book. And that brings us to book four, The Dark Secret. Before I give the ranking, I'm just gonna put this out there. What the heck? What do you all have against Starflight? Like you gave him B plus in the character tier list and he has the lowest rated book on this entire list. Like, what? It was so good though. Sure, there was slightly less action, but there wasn't even that much less and the plot got so thin thick. You could, you could, you, I, I don't know where I was going with this, but the book was really good. Criminally underrated. But the final book of arc one, The Brightest Night, did a bit better. It takes an even higher spot in A tier than book three. It was a really fitting end to the first arc, finally bringing together so many of the things that the series had been building to over the previous four books. Plus, I mean, is the book Kibley shows up in, so I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, it's got a lot of things going for it. I did have have to laugh though because Sunny's plan is just... <laughs> Like, she brings together the three Sandwing sisters, who have done nothing but try to kill each other for the past two decades without any sort of plan, and then hopes for the best, and somehow it works. Look, I really like Sunny, but that idea was so far beyond terrible that it somehow crossed back over into being great. I don't know, book five was wild, I loved reading it, A tier, moving on. Here we have the arc two book, starting with number six, Moon Rising. This one is probably my favorite of the first books of each arc, I found it especially entertaining how Tui used Moon's mind reading abilities to introduce the entire cast, showing us who they are not just through their actions, but through their private innermost thoughts as well. It was a really unique and fun way to get to know the new characters. I also quite appreciated how Darkstalker was introduced as the big bad guy who's actually maybe not such a bad guy. This one takes the top spot in A tier. Next up is number seven, Winter Turning. So I thought this book had some of the best character development in the series. Watching Winter grow and work through the biases that had been drilled into him since his birth was really cool, especially when it all culminated in him deciding to reject the Ice Wings and leave behind everything that had defined who he was, being the nephew of <laughs> Glacier. <laughs> but it seems like people had different opinions because it ended up in B tier. Again, I say underrated, but I can kind of understand this one. Winter's perspective can be really annoying to read, especially in the first half, because he's just kind of a big racist jerk, uh, but he does get better. Then there's book eight, Escaping Peril. This book was the odd one out in arc two. Peril wasn't really a main character in the first two books of the arc, and she doesn't continue to be a main character after this one, but it's just sort of Peril time right in the middle. I personally wasn't a fan of Peril's writing style, it was just too over the top for me, but I definitely understand why people might like it, and it was nice to see Scarlet finally getting what she had coming. Plus, this book went really deep into exploring the themes of identity, which, as discussed in the previous video, were super important to the finale of this arc. All things considered, you guys rated it B+. Book 9, The Talons of Power. So am I the only one who is a little upset this book broke the pattern of having the title be 
some combination of a verb and the point of view character's name, like moon rising, winter turning, escaping peril. I'm not sure what this one would have been called. Uh, maybe turtle hiding, because that's all he ever does in this book. I know some people really like him because he's shy and had his dreams crushed and blah blah blah. I'll agree, he deserves a lot of love because he really does stand for what's right even when he would rather do anything else. I was just annoyed at him for most of the book. I thought the best parts were when he wasn't the focus and we were following Darkstalker around, but the data doesn't lie. Turtle gets A tier, so there you go. People seem to enjoy it. Now, closing out arc 2 is book 10, The Darkness of Dragons. It's just a good book. Especially in the second half, there's a constant feeling of suspense. All the big arcs and themes start making their payoffs, and the epilogue is probably the best epilogue in the entire series. Bonus points too because of the titles. Fun fact, The Darkness of Dragons is not only the title of the final book in arc 2, it was also the section title of the final part of the first book of the arc, and it contrasts with the section title of the final part of this book, The Light of Dragons, and that's just so beautifully poetic to me. Plus, <laughs> it was from Kibley's perspective. <laughs> So anyway, it gets A+. Plus. Just great. Next up is Arc 3, starting with The Lost Continent, Book 11. Probably the weakest book of the arc landing in B tier. Just like with Book 1, it also had to spend a good amount of time setting up the continent and characters, and unlike Book 6, it didn't have any established things to build off. So with that said, though, it did have some cool things going on, especially, I thought, with the Book of Clear Sight and with Blue and Cricket. They were pretty cute. Then Book 12 shows up, and we get even more of Blue and Cricket. Other than that, though, I actually don't have a whole lot to say about book 12. It happened, Cricket was awesome, and yeah, solid book. You guys gave it a uh, high B tier. Next is book 13, The Poison Jungle. This book for me turned arc 3 around, where it started kind of meh. Book 13 added all of the action and intrigue I'd been missing, which is not to say books 11 and 12 didn't have that, just that book 13 did it so well. Sundu was a really fun point of view to read from, and her character arc was probably the most important arc to happen in any of the books because it really set up the finale and allowed for the twist reveal of Wasp actually not being the big bad guy of the arc. Plus, it had the Sundu Willow ship in it, and people loved that, so book 13 easily takes a spot in A+. The Dangerous Gift, book 14. Okay. If I thought book 8 felt like the odd one out of its arc, book 14 took that to an entirely different level. It honestly seemed more like a Legends novel than it did part of the primary arc. But with that being said, The Dangerous Gift pulled out all the stops on its character development. It's like that meme, uh, how much time do you want to spend working on the character development in this book? And then Tui was just like, Yes. At the start of it, I had to take reading breaks because I could not stand to read about Snowfall's insecure and irrational decision making, but by the end of it, I was like, yes, Snowfall! So even if it was almost entirely separated from the main plot, it was still a really good book. You guys put it in A tier. Book 15, The Flames of Hope, and the final book so far in the main arcs. This one is kind of polarizing. Some people really, really liked it, and some people really, really hated it. Personally, I'm on the side of enjoying it, though I will acknowledge it dropped the ball in quite a few places. All things considered, I think it did a really good job of tying together the themes and ideas that the arc had been building, even if it didn't deliver on every plot expectation we may have had for it. And that was about the average vote, I think. It landed in B+, so not the worst, not the best, just kind of there. For our final three here, we have the non-main arc books, starting with the winglets. Now, I know there are technically four short stories in these, but it just seemed better to lump them all together for the video. They took a spot in B+, as well. Well, for me personally, I really felt like they all added depth to the world, and it was just interesting to see characters and events from a new perspective. Then we have Dragon Slayer Legends. This one as well added a lot of depth to the world, had some really interesting characters, and showed the entire first arc from a very new perspective, which was so much fun. But the focal characters were humans, and the fanbase hates humans, I think, so it gets relegated to B tier. Kinda sad, but my fingers are tightly crossed for a Dragon Slayer 2 because there's so much left to explore with the plot and the characters it set up. And finally, we have Darkstalker Legends. Put this book where it belongs all the way at the top of S tier. It is the highest rated anything of any tier list I've ever made. Rated higher than Kibley, higher than Sundu, higher than Sundu and Willow together. It's just such a good 
book. Even if it isn't your favorite, I think most people acknowledge that it is the most well-written book in the series. It has such good characters, such an interesting plot, and such an emotional ending. It entirely changed my understanding of Arc 2, and oh man, did it mess me up when I finished it. I think I spent that entire weekend just like laying on my couch, pondering the meaning of life. It was truly a beautiful story, and very deserving of its spot in S tier. So that's the tier list. Which did you agree with? Which did you disagree with? Let everyone know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.